Hi. Congratulations. Welcome. We're all very excited to have you in here. I Thanks. see some hands up for a uh, question. Um, I know also this year, on top of your big award tonight, you were awarded the Alan Slate Honor at the 2018 Canadian Walk of Fame. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I think first question here, third row. Hi, Jesse. <laughs> Over here. Congratulations. Hey. Hi, thank you. <laughs> I'm Sophia Rodriguez from 106.9 The X. So, Sophia. <laughs> well, I have to say, as a Latina, it was so exciting to see you up there. So I have to ask, how does it feel to kind of be that flag bearer for the Latino community in uh, Canadian music? Crazy. It feels nice. I mean, por ser Latina, de tener esas raíces dentro de mí, y tenerlas tan presente ahorita es, es un orgullo. And I'm just... <laughs> I feel like... I feel like I'm really grateful that my parents chose Canada and I feel like there's open arms here and it's very apparent. And I don't know, man. If I was raised somewhere else or born somewhere else, I feel like I wouldn't have been as encouraged to wave both flags. But in Canada, you wave your parents' flag and you wave the Canadian flag, you know? So, it's cool. Gracias. Viva Colombia, y whip. I love it. Uh, back here, uh, you guys have your hand up? Yep. Hola, Jessy. Felicitaciones. Hola. Gracias. Eh, qué orgullo. Gracias. Quiero decirte, lo primero quería preguntarte, ¿cómo haces para ser una persona tan auténtica, siendo tan pública. Eso a veces lo vulnera a uno eh, ante una industria que es tan difícil. ¿Cómo haces? Yo no, no sería capaz si no fuera por mi mamá y mi papá. Estoy muy... Sorry. So, um, voy a contestar en los dos, ¿sí? Um, I, she asked me if, how I've managed to be so authentic in an industry that's, that makes it hard to be that. And I said I wouldn't have been able to if it wasn't for my mother and my father. Um, mis papás de yo ser chiquitica me dejaban expresarme como yo sentía y sin, sin temor de que ellos me juzgaran por querer vestirme como yo quería o por querer amarrar, a, 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 um, arreglar mi pelo como yo quería, tener una moña, no ponerme maquillaje, tener la ropa de mi hermano, todas esas cosas. I'm saying that... Um, The reason why I feel so free to be authentic is because my mother and father allowed me to have an environment when I was younger to wear boys' clothes if I wanted, to not wear makeup if I wanted, to listen to whatever I wanted. But just as long as I was a good person and not being a dick and not lying and not just, you know, don't be a dick. You'll be all right. And I was like, all right, cool. And I was able to coast, man. I'm very grateful for them. I don't think I'd be speaking to you guys, any of you guys, if it wasn't for them. Por ellos. Hey, hola, Jesse. Hey. hey, hola, Jesse. It's Howard from SoCan. So, Howard. Hi. I just wanted to uh, to ask about uh, the songwriting camp that you hosted in uh, in Toronto and uh, giving back to the community that way, the the musical community that way. Thanks. But can you talk a little bit about the camp and and, and putting it together and how it worked? Um. So I uh, I um. My driving factor behind why I'm in this is philanthropy. And I, it's just crazy, it's all about my parents. My mother's worked a lot with children her whole life and that's her drive, so that imprinted on me and I want to make sure I start an orphanage before I die. I want to make sure I affect the lives of other kids before I die and Remix Project, shout out Gavin Shepard, shout out Drex, changed my life. Hell yeah, man. So. I, I just take lessons from that and try to put it forward and I wanted to do something little. It wasn't big, it was just a two day thing, a two day workshop for kids. It was 1300 submissions on Instagram and it was just to pass on the knowledge that I've gained. I'm not a master, but I've learned from Calvin Harris, I've learned from Babyface, all those name droppings because those are the legends that I feel like I've learned from and I wanted to pass on that information to people that, kids that, youth that might not have that as accessible as I had it because of the position that I was in. Um, it was lit. It was doing what's been done to me, man. It was just paying it forward, and it's not bigger than it is, but it was legit just paying it forward. And shout out Velo, shout out, shout out everybody who was involved. They were all so dope, and I, I'm just paying it forward. 
I have one last question front row here from David. Hey, Jesse. Hey. Oh, shit. Uh, shout out SoCan and Nando's. And who else helps sponsor that? SoCan and Nando's? And Dream House. Dream House is the first place I ever got my first paycheck from a song, man. My first paycheck. And that's why I wanted to do it at that studio, because I came home to my mom and dad, and I was like, yo, money. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you. Hey, David Friend from the Canadian Press. Um, we ta- How's it going? We talked last year about uh, why you wanted to be at the Junos last year and the importance of representation in Canada on TV. And, I was, and you, you came back this year and you handed out an award and, and won one. Um, I'm hoping you can talk about you know, the future, if you want to be back at the Junos again. There's obviously a lot of conversation about Canadian artists getting massive success and then not being here. What, what do you think about the future of future Junos. And then not being here next year? I mean, people will say, is Jesse gonna be, Jesse gonna be here next year? Fuck that. <laughs> this is my second year, right? Lit. I'm trying to get a third year. I'm trying to get a fourth year, trying to get a 10th year. I'm focused on legacy, to be honest. Like I said, philanthropy is my driving factor. It's bigger than music, and I hope to see you guys in 10 years. I appreciate your listening ears. I appreciate you guys listening to my song, but it's bigger than music. So God willing, on my mother, I'll see you in 10 years. Right on. Jesse, thank you so much. Thank you. Huge congratulations to you.